Hello everybody, I'm doing a VR for Mark, Dutch Knife Guy. If you don't know Dutch Knife Guy's channel, I'll put a link below. He did a video recently showing um, some objects that have personal importance to him. His mother passed away some years ago and he has a selection of items that remind him of her. And it's asked us to do a VR along broadly similar lines. He wants us to show something or some things that we would never sell. Something that's too important to lose possession of it. So I'm going to start by going right back to when I was in high school. The only subject that I was really any good at was engineering drawing. And this was, um, would have been 82, 83, something like that. We'd heard of CAD, but there was no way at that point anybody was ever going to get anywhere near it. In fact, I'm not even sure there were more than half a dozen CAD workstations in the country at the time. I'm assuming universities had them, but we had to do everything with pencils and rulers. Specifically, this pencil. Just a standard Pentel, half a millimetre propelling pencil. But I've had that, um, well, a good 30 years or more, um, 35 years or more. And the story, basically at the time, when I wanted to pursue the engineering drawing as my thing, um, there was quite a bit of equipment needed for doing your homework. And we didn't have a lot of money. So my aunties helped out and they kitted me out with all the stuff I needed. So as well as my little pencil, they got me a set of drawing pens. Rotring. Now does anybody still use these I wonder? Oh. One of them unfortunately is missing the, the main pen body. Uh, two of them are seized up, but one of them, I think, I'll just check, can't remember which one now, ah yeah, the biggest one, that makes sense. When you take the pen body out, if you can hear, the little weight inside that moves the pin up and down the nozzle to keep it clear, is still running free on that one. So I wonder how many people out there will remember rotring isograph pens. Oh, they were shit hot at the time. So I had my pencil and my pens for drafting film. Not that we use drafting film in the general course of it, but um, the teacher used to bring some scraps in that you catch here and there for me to use. There's still ink in there. I believe it's a shellac based ink so I probably can't use that anymore being a vegetarian. Compass attachments. So those are the pens and then the other key bit that was very generously provided for me 30 odd years ago there's compasses for old level tech drawing these are way over the top really in terms of the quality that you need but my auntie Ada was very much of the opinion that if you're going to pursue something long term you may as well get a decent kit to start with and these are still in pretty much perfect condition 
Again, I don't know if these names are still highly thought of as they were, but a Cobra Compasses, Statler, Rotaring Dividers and a, a slightly more basic Rotaring Spring Compass. The big uh, extension bar, I think, is for the yeah, is for the Cobra. So you would be able to comfortably draw a circle with a four-inch radius, but then you whack that on, and you're getting up to about eleven inches. More than enough. Fnaf, fnaf, irk, irk. Um, yeah. So those have a lot of sentimental value. Partly just because they're very old, but also because they remind me of my Auntie Ada. Now, as I said, the thing I wanted to do, or the thing I thought I wanted to do with the engine and drawing was be a draftsman. Particularly at the time, as sort of 13, 14 year old, I thought I wanted to be a draftsman uh, in the nuclear power industry. It seemed very exciting and very um, interesting. But then, my aunties also gave me this book. Dawn, let's try and get that on camera, hang on. Dawn Over Zero by William L. Lawrence. And here, as we can see from the title page, The Story of the Atomic Bomb. This was published in 1947 and you can tell the very basic um, austerity type binding, not long after the war finished. At the time, I thought this was a very interesting book about um, the development of the atomic bomb. But as I grew up and uh, most people will do quite a bit of growing up between the ages of sort of 13 and 18. And reading this book was probably one of the first instances of me becoming a bit more politically aware. And once I understood the connection between nuclear power industry and the nuclear weapons industry, I no longer wanted to be a draftsman for British nuclear fuels. I didn't want that at all. The knock-on effects were over time to trigger my interests in the environment and conservation. So these objects have had quite a profound effect on me. The drawing instruments played a big part in me being able to find something at school that I was good at and that I enjoyed doing but then the book um, was one of the most important parts of my education it set me on the path to being who I am today really so those are my objects that I'll never sell I'll never get rid of Thanks for watching.